Hi, I'm Michaela Zettel, registered physiotherapist with Instill Physio. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do something called the piston breath. The piston breath is something that I learned from Julie Weed, physical therapist, and the link to her website is in the notes for this video. If you're a healthcare provider and you wanna learn more about it, check out her website, she has tons of information. So the piston breath is used to recruit and learn how to connect with the anticipatory core muscles, which include your diaphragm, your pelvic floor and your transverse abdominals. So your diaphragm helps you breathe and it lives in your rib cage here and your pelvic floor is in your pelvis. It's like a hammock between your legs and it goes from the front, so the pelvic bone to the back tailbone. And then your transverse abdominals are the deepest abdominal layer and they wrap all the way around you and they attach from the rib cage down to the pelvis. So these three muscles work together to prep you for movement. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect to those muscles using your breath. But just quickly, here you can see the diaphragm, the abs, and the pelvic floor. When you breathe in, the diaphragm goes down and the abs lengthen and the pelvic floor lengthens. And when you breathe out, your diaphragm comes back up and the pelvic floor and the abs shorten and contract. So that's what we're going to learn how to do in this video. Your body position, your posture, and how you move will influence your ability to use these muscles well. And so this is just the starting point that I want you to try. And so I'm going to give you a few cues if something doesn't feel right. But just know that there's lots of, of other ways to accomplish this. And so if what I'm teaching you here doesn't work, let me know, okay? So if we're starting with the diaphragm, we need to learn how to breathe so that we're using our diaphragm. Typically, we tend to breathe apically into our chest, so up chest breathers, especially if you're really stressed or if you tend to try to pull your shoulders back, okay, and that will make you stick your chest out. Or if you've been taught to do this to correct your posture or um, in training, if they've told you to stick your chest out or draw your shoulders down and back, I often see that happening, okay? So the position that you're in will affect your ability to do that. But in order to get the diaphragm moving well, we need to have the lower ribs moving well. So what will happen is when you breathe in, especially female athletes, you have your sports bra, you wanna feel all the way around that sports bra, the band of the sports bra. So when you breathe in, you want the lower ribs opening 360 degrees. So if you're standing there, I just want you to shift the weight so it's even over your feet. You can put your hands here and you're gonna try that breath. So breathing in, 360 degrees. Exhale, nice and gentle. On your exhale, you don't wanna feel your abs gripping, okay? You just wanna feel the ribs. You could also put your hand here and here and that can help a lot too to feel if you're breathing more into the chest or not. So. letting your tummy go. If you're holding your abs really tight, you won't be able to do a, a breath that gets your diaphragm moving well. So even just now, if you squeeze your tummy and try to take a deep breath, it won't work. Okay, so you do need to be able to let those abs go. So again, you wanna feel that those lower ribs are opening 360 degrees. Should feel like you're using your brain quite a bit, but like your body's not doing a whole lot of work, okay? So you're gonna start with that. Now, the next piece is adding in the pelvic floor. So as I showed you with the balloon, when you breathe in and the diaphragm descends, your pelvic floor lengthens, okay? So we need to learn how to do that lengthening. So for the purpose of the piston breath, we're gonna divide the pelvic floor into the front and the back. So the front is your pee muscles and the back would be like holding in a fart, okay? So if you squeeze the front, can you feel those muscles like you're holding in P and then the back like you're holding in a fart? Whichever one feels easiest to connect with, that's what you're going to start with, okay? And you're going to start the breath in, so you're going to start that umbrella breath. And you're going to think about lengthening and opening, okay? So the opposite of squeezing those muscles. So if the front felt better, think about the front. So breathing in lengthen and open. You can also think about holding a kidney bean in the pelvic floor muscles and you're lowering and opening and letting it go. Okay, but you're not pushing. So breathing in, lengthen and open, 
star your breath out, okay? Then you would try that with the back muscles, whichever one you didn't start with. If you're doing the back, it's a little different because it's on an angle, okay? So the front muscles are more straight up and down and the back is more on an angle. So if you're breathing in, you're gonna think about your tailbone spreading open gently. And then as you exhale, you're gonna close and lift gently, okay? So we did the inhale, lengthen, and now we're gonna do the lift. So inhale, lengthening the pelvic floor. Next part, you're gonna start your exhale, and then you're gonna think about, let's say the front muscles, closing gently around a kidney bean and pulling up inside of you, okay? You wanna do this gentle, as though you're lifting a blueberry and you don't want to crush it. So you're gonna breathe in, lengthen open, start your breath out, close and lift gently. You're just standing here, so it doesn't have to be maximum contraction. Most of the time, female athletes are trying to contract too, too much. So you wanna just do a nice, gentle, again, your brain's working really hard, your body's not. Then you could repeat the same thing with the back muscles, remembering it's on an angle. So breathing in, lengthen, open the pelvic floor, start your breath out, close and lift the pelvic floor. Then you could try putting them together, okay? Now, if you're not sure, that's okay. Go back to the breath. Remember, it's like a bicep. You need to learn how to lengthen it before you can contract it. You can't just walk around doing bicep curls like this all the time, all right? That's not functional. The pelvic floor, the core is the same way. You can't just learn how to contract it all the time. It's not functional. So you need to go back to the inhale, lengthen, open. Now, if you can't feel it in standing, you can try it laying down. I'll link to that other video, okay? And you're just gonna prop yourself with pillows. Again, check out that video because some people feel it easier in uh, to start in standing and other people find it easier laying down, okay? And this is just to get you connecting with those muscles. Now, a couple cues. If you are somebody who does this with your shoulders, you may need to practice leaning forward and letting that rib cage stack because if you're here, you're already on that inhale position, it's gonna be really hard to get that umbrella breath. Likewise, if you're more rounded down, you might find that you're just breathing into your tummy, so you may need to stand up a little bit. So you'll have to check in the mirror. Are you here? Are you here? And adjust accordingly. The goal is that you're feeling that breath all the way around, okay? Then the same goes with the pelvis, all right? If you look in the mirror and you're really tucked under like this, you may need to lift your tailbone a little bit, okay? So I like to do the cue lifting your tailbone. And then you would try the breathing. Does it feel easier to connect to your pelvic floor? If it does, great, work in that position, okay? Very rarely do I need to cue this, but it's not never, okay? So you can try, if you feel like you're sticking your bum out really far, try the upper body correction first because most of the time, it's because your rib cage is flared up and not because you need to change your pelvic position, okay? The other thing you can do is just shift the weight on your feet, so forward and back, side to side. Try to find where the weight feels even. And then check your breath again. Does it feel any easier? If it does, great, practice there, okay? Then the last one, if you're really not feeling it, is you can do a bit of a ski jump. And what you're gonna do is just lean forward from your ankles and just let your upper body tilt with you. And then try your breath there. And if it feels easier here, great. Do a few breaths and then just shift back from your ankles and see if you can find that position. Now, you may feel like you're leaning forward. That's okay. This is just the starting point to learn how to connect to these muscles. You don't stay here for long. You progress it quickly and integrate it into movement. And that's where you really feel the benefits but you have to start with learning how to connect those muscles. So this is what I want you to do. Practice this every day for a couple minutes. Remember, gentle breath, gentle contraction, no ab squeezing. Find the position where you can feel the breath and the pelvic floor the easiest, and you're not gonna master this right away. It's gonna take a little bit of time to learn how to connect to those muscles because chances are you've never done it before, and we, Female athletes cannot see our pelvic floor, so it's harder to connect to at first. But as you practice, you'll find it's easy. And if you wanna put this with movement, check out some of the other exercises I have on here because I, I cue you your piston breath 
throughout all the exercises, okay? Try it and let me know how it goes.